Cainta, officially the municipality of Cainta, Tagalog, Bayan ng Cainta, is a first-class municipality in the province of Rizal, Philippines. According to the 2015 census, it has a population of 322,128 people. It is one of the oldest municipalities in Luzon, founded on August 15, 1571, and has a land area of 4,299 hectares (10,620 acres). Cainta serves as the secondary gateway to the rest of Rizal Province from Metro Manila. With the continuous expansion of Metro Manila, Cainta is now part of Manila's conurbation, which reaches Cardona in its easternmost part, and is therefore one of the most urbanized towns. According to the 2015 census, it has a population of 322,128 people, making it the second most populous municipality in the Philippines after Rodriguez, Rizal, although there are efforts underway to convert it into a city. Its total assets amounting to PHP 3,988,392,142.17 as per 2017 Commission on Audit Summary makes it the richest municipality in the country. Cainta faces different challenges especially with its boundary disputes with Pasig, Greenpock Village, Karangalan Village, St. Joseph Subdivision, Valerica Subdivision, Riverside, and Midtown Village, Taytay, -tay, Greenland and eastern part of Cainta, and Antipolo, Valley Golf and Country Club, Valley View, and Palmera Heights. Geography Cainta is bounded on the north by Marikina City and Antipolo City but not bounded San Mateo, on the west by Pasig City, and on the east and south by Taytay. It lies in the Marikina Valley, is 10% rolling hills and 90% residential industrial. It has the province's highest number of rivers and streams. Historians claim that Cainta's old geographical boundaries encompass the mountain slopes of Montalban. Barangays Cainta is politically subdivided into seven barangays. In the mid-1990s, Cainta submitted a petition to the Rizal Provincial Government to consider a proposal for 18 additional barangays, to make a total of 25 barangays. The proposal is still pending. Legend Legend has it that there was an old woman called Jacinta who was well known not only in her own native town but also in the neighboring towns. In her youth, she was very popular because of her great beauty, kindness, and wealth. Although she was a member of a very rich clan, she showed generosity of heart to the poor. Hence, she became very much loved and respected. Jacinta grew to be an old maid because after her sweetheart got sick and died, she never fell in love with anyone else. When her parents died and she was left alone in the house, she continued her charity work. She gave alms to the long line of beggars who came to her, and housed and took care of the orphans and children in the streets. In her old age, she was still very popular and was fondly called Ka Inta. Ka, referring to a term of respect for the elderly, as well as a term for the feeling of camaraderie or Kapwa, feeling for someone. One Christmas day, however, when the old and the young called on her to give their greetings, she was not by the window to welcome them. People wondered at her absence and shouted her name to call her attention but no one came to answer. Concerned, they went up the house and discovered the dead body of Ka Inta lying on the floor. Beside her were the piles of Christmas gifts she was preparing to give to her well-wishers that day. People far and wide grieved over her death. In memory of her goodness and her generosity, her native town was named after her and was called Cainta. The municipality's name may also have come from the Sanskrit word, Kantha, Kuhnthaa, Kantha which means a narrow place or constriction. It also means, stem, or, branch, in Sanskrit literature, describing the deeply forested tropical wilderness which used to surround the area. During the period 1762–1764, during the various Anglo-Spanish Wars, 600 Sepoy or native Indian, troops arrived in the Philippines as part of the military expedition of the East India Company. When the British troops withdrew, many of the Sepoys mutinied and refused to leave. Virtually all had taken Filipina brides, or soon did so. The region in and around the town still has many Sepoy descendants. 
During the 18th century, there was robust trade between Manila and the Caramandal coast of Bengal, involving Philippine exports of tobacco, silk, cotton, indigo, sugarcane and coffee. Sepoy troops from Madras, now Chennai, Tamil Nadu, British India also arrived with the British expedition and occupation between 1762 and 1764 during the Seven Years' War. The Indians left a culinary legacy in the spicy and highly seasoned dishes that are now part of mainstream Cainta cuisine. Cainta became part of Tondo, starting 1763, but separated in 1883 and incorporated with the district of Morong. Cainta became an independent town in 1760. History Spanish rule Founded on November 30, 1571, Cainta was a fiercely independent village that fought valiantly against the Spaniards but was later defeated and became a visita annex of Taytay in 1571 under the Jesuits. Changes in ecclesiastical administration made Cainta a part of Pasig under the Augustinians but it was deeded back to the Jesuits by the King of Spain in 1696. Cainta became a separate township in 1760. After the death of Raja Matanda, Adentado Miguel de Legaspi received word that two ships, San Juan and Espiritu Santo, had just arrived in Panay Island in the central Philippines from Mexico. One ship was under the command of Don Diego de Legaspi, his nephew, and the other of Juan Chacon. The two ships were in such disrepair when they arrived in Panay that one of them was not allowed to return to Mexico. Legaspi ordered that it be docked on the river of Manila. The Maestro de Campo was sent to Panay to oversee its transfer to Manila, with Juan de la Torre as captain. To help spread the faith, several Augustinian friars were commissioned by Spain and were among the ship's passengers. One of them was Father Alonso de Alvarado, who had been in the Armada of Villa Lobos. Another was Father Agustin de Albuquerque, who became the first parish priest of Tall Town, south of Manila. Some of the missionaries were sent to Cebu Province in the central Philippines to accompany Father Martin de Rada the prior. Four stayed to work in Pampanga Province and the environs north and south of Manila, which included the then village of Cainta. Conversion to Catholicism The chief religion is Roman Catholicism. When the Spaniards came they celebrated the feast of Saint Andrew the Apostle and a mass was held in a chapel made of nipa palm branches and wood. Many people came to attend and consequently were baptized into the faith. The Church of Cainta was completed in 1715. It was gutted during World War II. Only the outer walls and the façade remained which was repaired with a coat of Portland cement. In 1727, an image depicting Our Lady of Light was brought to Cainta from Sicily, Italy, and was among the structures destroyed by Japanese and the joint American and Filipino bombs. Except for the outer walls, now greatly renovated, hardly anything remains of the old church. Extensive damage was also caused by recurrent earthquakes and typhoons that plagued the Philippines. The natives helped in its restoration and the new building was completed on February 25, 1968 and blessed by Manila Cardinal Archbishop Rufino Jao Santos. The Battle of Cainta Meanwhile, Legaspi was determined to subjugate the people of Cainta and Taytay, a neighboring town. He sent his nephew Juan de Salcedo with a galleon, a small ship propelled by oars and sails, and sixteen small boats accompanied by a hundred Spanish soldiers and many Visayas natives allied with them. Salcedo sailed on August 15, 1571, arriving in Cainta on the 20th. He sought peace from the villagers but the village chief, Gat Maiden, responded arrogantly, told him the people of Cainta, unlike those of Manila, were not cowards, and would defend their village to the death. Confident in the defenses offered by their fort and the security of the site, they were joined by people from Taytay. These two villages are on a plain on the shores of a river that flows from La Laguna and before arriving there divides in two large arms, both with abundant water. On its banks are found the two villages, half a league from each other, with the river passing through both before finally becoming one in a part of the terrain encircled by thick bamboo groves. These bamboos were tied together with liana, turning them into a thick wall where the people had constructed two ramparts with their moats full of water. 
By the river, they had built strong bulwarks with wooden towers and good artillery, guarded by a large number of warriors armed with arrows, swords and other projectile-type arms. Deciding to attack, Salcedo first sent 2nd Lieutenant Antonio de Carvajal with some escorts to reconnoiter the town and determine the weakest point where they could enter. Carvajal, wounded by an arrow in his arm, returned with the information that the weakest spot the least fortified and with the easiest access was the other part of an arroyo on the side of La Laguna where many boats could be seen entering the river. Salcedo ordered installed in the prow of the galley a stone-throwing mortar. He and his men then spent the night on shore, while twenty soldiers and numerous allies from Manila remained with Carvajal on the galley with orders that when they heard firing, they should proceed with the attack on the bulwarks and the houses in the town, while Salcedo and his men tried to enter through the wall by the arroyo. When they heard the sound of the bugle, the signal that they had taken the town, they were to stop firing. After giving these instructions, Salcedo began his march and turned toward the river where the attack was to take place. He arrived in the arroyo and found it defended by a fistful of valiant Cainta men who started to fire arrows and hurl lances. Taken by surprise, the soldiers without waiting for Salcedo's order attacked the rampart and were overwhelmed by a rain of arrows. Finding such tenacious resistance, they began to retreat and flee in disarray. Salcedo berated his men harshly for having attacked without his orders. Observing that in the other part of the arroyo the rampart was lower, he ordered a skiff brought there and after beaching it, he ordered some of his soldiers to use it as passage to the other side and take a more elevated point from where they could fire at the defenders of the town. With the defenders retreating, Salcedo and his men were able to approach the wall and breach it. The intrepid Gad Maiden with his Cainta men came to close the breach, forcing Saavedra to back off. In the meantime, the cannons of the galley destroyed the bulwarks and the houses in the town in a manner the people had not seen before. And the shouts of the 600 Visayans allied with the Spanish made the natives believe that the Spaniards were already inside the Poblacion town proper. Because of this, the valiant defenders of the breach abandoned it and retreated to the center of the town. Salcedo observed this from a distance and ordered the breach attacked again. This time, the Spaniards encountered little resistance. Led by Salcedo and with Saavedra carrying the Spanish banner, they succeeded in entering the town. Together with their soldiers, they advanced rapidly and shortly scaled the wall where a bloody battle was fought. The Cainta men, encouraged by their chief Gat Maiden, preferred to die rather than surrender. Having taken over the walls, the Spaniards climbed the towers and hoisted the Spanish banner. At the blare of the bugle, the cannon stopped firing from the galley. Cainta became an independent town in 1760. During the brief British occupation of Luzon (1762–1763), part of its British India troops, known as sepoys, lived and intermarried with the natives in one of the town's barrios. The Indian left a culinary legacy in the spicy and highly seasoned dishes that are now part of mainstream Cainta cuisine. Cainta became part of Tondo, starting 1763, but separated in 1883 and incorporated with the district of Morong. March 16, 1899 Exequial Ample was assigned by Emilio Aguinaldo to liberate Cainta. Maj. William P. Rogers, CO of the 3rd Battalion, 20th U.S. Infantry Regiment, came upon the Filipinos in Cainta, about 1,000 strong, and forced them to retreat. He burned the town. Two Americans were killed and 14 wounded, while the Filipinos suffered about 100 killed and wounded. Upon the approach of the Americans, Exequiel Ample y de la Cruz, the Presidente Municipal of Cainta and a former agente especial of the Katipunan who had become a pronounced Americanista, strongly advised the Filipino soldiers to surrender. Instead, they shot him. Although wounded, Ample managed to escape. On March 3, 1902, major American newspapers, including the New York Times reported, Felizardo, at the head of 25 men armed with rifles, entered the town of Cainta, dot and captured the Presidente of Cainta, Señor Ample, and a majority of the police of the town. Señor Ample has long been known as an enthusiastic American sympathizer, and it is feared that he may be killed by the enraged ladrones thieves and land grabbers. A strong force of constabulary has been sent to try to effect his release. Timoteo Passe was the actual leader of the guerrilla band that kidnapped Ample on February 28, 1902. On March 4, 1902, near the hills of Morong Town, Ample found an opportunity to escape. 
A detachment of constabulary was taken from the garrison at Pasig and stationed at Cainta for his protection, he survived the war. And upon retiring from his military and political career, Don Exequiel Ample together with his wife, Doña Priscilla Monzon, applied and managed their vast estate from Tramo, Rosario, Pasig, to Cainta River San Jose, Cainta, up to the Valley Golf Club, Mayamot, Antipolo, down to Ortigas Extension, San Isidro, Tete. The lots where the old and the new municipal halls stands, were also part of his estate. Their son Dr. Jesus Ample also became a mayor, grandfather of the Ample brothers, whose siblings wear Lumen, Adi. Vicente, of Pase City, Rosario and Jose. Post-Spanish era in 1913, under the American rule, Cainta and Angono were consolidated with Taytay as one government entity. On January 1, 1914, it once again became an independent municipality and remained so to this day. Cainta is one of 14, 14 municipalities of Rizal Province after the inclusion of other towns of what are now referred to as Antipolo, Angono, Binangonan and Taytay. In 1942, Japanese occupation troops entered Cainta. In 1942–1944, local guerrilla groups of the Hunters ROTC was the four-year main invasions in Cainta against the Japanese, when the guerrillas were retreating by the Japanese before the liberation. In 1945, local Filipino troops of the 4th, 42nd, 45th, 46th, 47th and 53rd Infantry Division of the Philippine Army and 4th Infantry Regiment of the Philippine Constabulary started the liberation and captured Cainta and helped the guerrilla resistance fighters of the Hunters ROTC guerrillas to fight against the Japanese and ended World War II. Liberation of Cainta during World War II under the Allied Liberation, the sum of all stronghold of local Filipino soldiers of the Philippine Commonwealth Army 4th, 42nd, 45th, 46th, 47th and 53rd Infantry Division and the Philippine Constabulary 4th Constabulary Regiment was sending the local military operations and liberated in all municipal town of Cainta and aided the local guerrilla groups of the Hunters ROTC guerrillas against the Japanese Imperial Armed Forces and begins the liberation of Cainta on 1945 and arrival by the American Liberation Forces enters the town. The general headquarters, camp bases and garrisons of the Imperial Japanese Armed Forces in Cainta and inside of all Japanese soldiers of the Imperial Japanese Army was invaded the battles and captured of all the local Filipino soldiers of the Philippine Commonwealth Army and Philippine Constabulary and the local guerrillas of the Hunters ROTC guerrillas after the fighting. After the war, the local casualties was over 3,810 Filipino troops of the Philippine Commonwealth Army and Philippine Constabulary killed in action and 12,400 wounded in action. The local guerrillas of the Hunters ROTC was over 200 killed in action and 700 wounded in action and over 15,000 Japanese troops of the Imperial Japanese Armed Forces was killed in action, 36,000 wounded in action and over 3,400 captured in action. Conversion to cityhood In late 2003, former Cainta Mayor Nicanor Felix, with the rest of its Sangguniang Bayan members, unanimously approved a resolution for Cainta's cityhood bid. On that same year, on its annual fiesta, the municipality had its theme, Cainta, Lungsod 2004, promoting its bid for cityhood. But, on the contrary, the Sangguniang Panlalawigan ng Rizal denied the Resolutiuan stating that, "...it must resolve first its boundary disputes with Pasig City, Antipolo City and Taytay." However, in January 2010, current Rizal Governor Jun Inares III now pushes the cityhood of Cainta and Taytay, due to the overabundance of jobs, amenities, and its people. In turn, incumbent Congressman Joel Guavit of the 1st District filed and passed a bill effectively creating a district composed of Cainta and Tete. The bill is now up at the committee level in the Senate. The idea of converting Cainta into a highly urbanized city was again proposed for the second time in 2018 after failure in 2004. Demographics in the 2015 census, the population of Cainta, was 322,128 people, with a density of 7,500 inhabitants per square kilometre or 19,000 inhabitants per square mile. 
In the 2007 census, it had a population of 304,478. Its population consists of 70% Roman Catholic Christians, 15% non-Catholic Christians including Iglesia Ni Cristo, Ang Dating Don, Aglipayan, Jesus is Lord, and others, 10% Muslims, 3% Chinese Buddhists, and 2% Sikhs. The people of Cainta are mostly Tagalog-speaking Filipinos. A considerable number of the population are descended from Indian soldiers who mutinied against the British Army when the British briefly occupied the Philippines in 1762–1763. These Indian soldiers called Sepoy were Tamil people from Chennai and settled in town and intermarried with native women. The Sepoy ancestry of Cainta is still very visible to this day, particularly in Barrio de Ap near Brigi. Sto Nino Local government Current officials The following are the elected officials during the 2016 elections. Mayors Benjamin Felix was deposed after People Power Revolution, replaced by OIC Mayor Dr. Renato Estanislao. Vice Mayors Seal the logo of Cainta, the emblem inside the double circle represents the flag of the Philippines in red, white and blue color. The three stars represent Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao. The eight sun rays represent the eight provinces that started the revolt against the Spaniards. The buildings represent the different business establishments operating in the municipality. The Suman Sa Ibus, Suman Sa Lihia, and Suman Antala represent the livelihood of its people, the same with bottled sweets made out of coconut milk called matamis na bao, nata de coco, kaong, beans, and many others. The piglets represent the backyard hog raising, a small scale industry. Transportation the main road of Cainta is Ortigas Avenue Extension, a heavily congested corridor that passes through the business district of Ortigas Center and leads to Mandaluyong City and San Juan in the west and the town of Taytay and Antipolo City in the east. Another major road is Francisco P. Felix Avenue, formerly known as Amelda Avenue, which runs across Ortigas Avenue Extension and connects the town to Marikina City to the north and Taytay to the south. The point of intersection between these two main arterials is known simply as Junction. A. Bonifacio Avenue, located in the town proper, is the town's most frequently traversed street. Traffic enforcers make their best to weaken the traffic situation in the areas of Junction, Karangalan, Parola and Brookside but the presence of these provided only minimal solution. Economy Cainta has a robust economy as evidenced by several commercial and industrial establishments that have sprouted. Cainta is the richest municipality in the country with respect to income revenue growth, based on 2010 COA report. The town continues to attract businesses because of its proximity to Manila and the town's burgeoning population which mostly consists of hard-working and hospitable people. Cainta is the richest municipality in the Philippines as evidence of numerous manufacturing firms here like Mitsubishi Motors Philippines, the largest car manufacturer in the country, the Mond M.Y. San Corporation, one of the nation's leading biscuit manufacturers, BF Construction Philippines, Ford Philippines, Motor Trade, Fortune Tobacco Corporation, Honda Cars Philippines, Hyundai Cainta, Rockbilt Manufacturing Corporation, Cathay Pacific Steel Corporation, South Pacific Chemical Industry, The House Printers Corporation, and more. Native delicacies The most common livelihood in Cainta is the making of native delicacies, a tradition inherited from Antipolo, which is largely a cottage industry. Its native desserts are among the nation's best. Dating back to the 15th century, it became the town's principal source of income for more than four centuries. Suman, rice cake wrapped in banana leaf, latik, boiled down coconut milk used for glazing, coconut jam and the famous babinka, are but a few of the sweet delights that lure many visitors to this town. During the 20th century, Cainta dazzled the whole country when it baked the biggest rice cake ever and the town became known as the Babinka capital of the Philippines. 
Babinka is believed to have been adapted from the Indian cuisine, an influence from its sepoy population. It comes from the Indian word bebanka also known as bibik, a dessert made of flour, coconut milk, and egg. The Philippine version is made of rice flour, coconut milk and salted duck eggs. Butter and sugar are used for glazing after cooking and before serving. Landmarks Cainted Junction, a major intersection, often referred to as Traffic Tambayan by the locals, adjoins the Metropolitan Highways Felix or Imelda Avenue at the north, A. Bonifacio Avenue to the south, and Ortigas Avenue on its east and west bounds. The busiest and a critical point where it connects Metro Manila and the rest of the Rizal Province. The Cainta Municipal Hall, when the old municipal building located at the current town plaza was destroyed by a fire, then Mayor Benjamin Felix called the attention of the provincial government to build a new one at a lot in Rosepak subdivision. It was finished in 1995. Hunter's ROTC Monument, located at Brigi. San Juan, this place is a memorial for the Hunters ROTC guerrillas, who bravely faced the occupation authorities during the World War II. Valley Golf and Country Club, one of the two well-known golf courses in the province of Rizal aside from Eastridge and Binangonan, Rizal. Libasang Bayan, Town Plaza, located at the Poblacion Town proper. It was the former place of the old municipal hall destroyed in 1995. Today, is host to some convocations and assemblies for Cayentanos. In Holy Week, a sinacolo is shown for the public. Our Lady of Light Parish, standing firmly as one of the most beautiful and oldest churches in the province, it is erected upon the directives of Fr. Gaspar Marco, S.J. in 1707 and was finished by Fr. Joaquin Sanchez in 1715. Upon its elevation into a parish in 1760, this church is renovated many times because of heavy rains and earthquakes. In 1889, this church was destroyed during the Filipino-American War, leaving only the adobe wall surviving. A mural depicting the patroness of the town, painted by national artist Fernando Amorsolo, has replaced the image ravaged during the war. This image is currently placed on the left side portion of the church's main altar. On 1966, a reconstruction of the church emerged upon the initiative of Cardinal Rufino Jao Santos. It was solemnly blessed on February 25, 1968. On December 1, 2007, during the official town fiesta, a historical marker was installed by the National Historical Institute on its facade, coinciding with the celebration of the third centenary of the construction of the church. On December 1, 2018, alongside the canonical coronation of its patroness, the parish church will be declared as a diocesan shrine. The current parish priest is Most. Reverend Nali C. Buco, J.C.D., D.D. Sta. Lucia East Grand Mall, the premier mall of Cainta, Sta. Lucia East Grand Mall, or simply Sta. Lucia East Mall, is a large shopping mall in the Philippines. The mall is owned by Sta. Lucia Realty and Development Inc. and is the largest shopping mall in the Eastern District of Metro Manila. The mall is situated along Marcos Highway Core. Felix Avenue, formerly Amelda Avenue, located at the Barangay San Isidro, in Cainta, Rizal. The mall has two buildings near Robinson's Place Metro East, Sta. Lucia Residence and is interconnected by a footbridge. Il Centro Ice Skating Rink, one of the first ice skating rinks in the Philippines to be opened outside of Metro Manila. It is located at the Il Centro Mall which the fourth building of the Sta. Lucia East Grand Mall. The other first ice skating rink to be opened outside of Metro Manila was also in Sta. Lucia East Grand Mall but it was later closed down. Robinson's Place Cainta – Robinson's Place Cainta is a Robinson's Mall opened in 2004 with a gross floor area of 31,000 square meters. It is Robinson's Land Corporation's 15th shopping mall located in Ortigas Avenue Extension, Junction, Cainta, Rizal. Robinson's Place Cainta houses a number of micro-retail outlets clustered together in an area called Market Bazaar. Also inside this mall is one of the biggest call centers in the country. The mall is flocked daily by residents' comings from the subdivisions within the vicinity of Cainta and since the area is very near the Cainta Junction, it is a common pickup and drop-off point of thousands of commuters most of whom work in the Ortigas and Makati business districts. Robinson Place Cainta is a favorite shopping and dining destination of customers coming from the different provinces of Rizal such as of Taytay, Antipolo, Angono, Binangonan and other municipalities.
Culture During Cainta's modernization period, traditions became more glamorous, most especially during the Lenten season. The most noteworthy rituals are the Sinakolo, a stage play of the Passion and Death of Christ, and the Angpig Papapako or Penitencia, a reenactment of the Crucifixion of Christ. The Sinakolo The Sinakolo in Cainta dates back to 1904. It originated from Barrio Dayap. The entire area now includes Barangays Sta. Rosa, Sto Nino, and Sto. Domingo. At that time, the population consisted of a small group of residents who were mostly related to each other. Since most of the people believed that calamities were brought in by evil spirits, they decided to put up cross on a vacant lot to counter them. The Barrio people paid homage to the cross by lighting it every night. One memorable incident happened during the Lenten season when a strange fragrance supposedly emanated from the cross. The news spread out not only in the barrio but also in the entire town of Cainta. Believing in the mystery of the cross, many people in Barrio Dayap and the whole town of Cainta have since then vowed to read the Pasayan, seven last words of Christ, every Lenten season. This has been enriched by an actual portrayal of the Passion of Christ on the streets, which was formerly called Officio. Many problems have been allegedly solved and illnesses cured through the cross as many people continuously believed. Over the years the followers of the cross have multiplied rapidly. To give deeper meaning to their devotion and showcase their religiosity, they broached the idea of staging the Pasayan. The first stage play was held a few years later, although initially it was limited in scope. It became so popular that the presentation was expanded to include stories from the Old Testament and other stages in the life of Christ and has become known as the Sinakolo. The venue was transferred to an open field in 1966 to accommodate a larger audience. Krus Sa Nayan, Inc. KSNI, was established as early as 1900 during and after Spanish era. The group was also known for its extravagant preparation and passion play every night of the Holy Week period. The KSNI Sinakolo play was previously held at the Jaca compound beside the municipal building and Francisco P. Felix Memorial National High School. To date, the play is held at the stage beside the municipal ground, alongside the One Cainta Police Headquarters and One Cainta Fire Department. Samahang Nazareno Inc. was organized in 1960, developed and enhanced the various aspects of Sinakolo. The local Roman Catholic parishioner gave the association its moral and financial support for it believed that it was an effective means of imparting its Christian message to the public. Came today Every 1 December, the town celebrates its foundation and feast of Our Lady of Light it is usually celebrated with its own festival, Sumingtik, Portmanteau of Suman, Babinka, and Latik, which started around 2014. The week-long celebration consists of various activities such as paintball tournament, battle of the bands, and Miss Cainta beauty pageant, which started on 2014. The first Miss Cainta title holder is Seika Santos and the current title holder is Cassandra Ebol. One of the much awaited event of the festival is the Caintican Sa Calzada, a street dance parade joined by various schools and organization of Cainta. The current champion is San Juan National High School. It is also comes with the Sumingtic King and Queen. The current title holders are Jamil Labe and Grace Buenconseo, respectively, both from San Juan National High School. Utilities Water In past decades Cainta had been suffering a lack of potable surface water supply, with only deep well water source available. Today, almost the entire municipality of Cainta is supplied 24 hours a day with potable water from the Manila Water Company Inc., MWSS concessionaire for East Zone, along with several towns in Rizal Province. Schools Secondary Tertiary Abe, Felix Avenue Cainta Catholic College College of St. John Paul II Arts and Sciences, formerly SJBIAS Cainta ICCT Colleges, Cainta Campus, Main Campus 
ICCT Colleges, Simulong Campus Informatics, Cainta Brickroad Campus Roosevelt College, Inc. RCI, Cainta Street. John Bosco Institute of Arts and Sciences STI, Academic Center, Ortigas Avenue Extension University of Rizal System, Cainta Campus Public. References External links Official website Philippine Standard Geographic Code Philippine Census Information Local Governance Performance Management System